ओंत सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्यंत मा कशि दुखमाया ओं शाति 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 At the outset, I am thankful to Ramakrishna Mat Bagda for organizing the program on the occasion of 125 years of Ramakrishna Mission. The topic given is interfaith harmony for world peace. World peace is a burning topic now nowadays in the present scenario. So much of quarrel going on in various parts of the world, and many people are afraid whether this will result in the third world war. It will be a horrible thing if the third world war takes place, because now we have so many nuclear weapons and chemical weapons in the world with various countries that. they can destroy the whole world whole of humanity not once but many times it's a horrible situation what will happen we do not know dr albert einstein was asked this question what is your idea about a third world war and einstein said i cannot say anything about the third world war but i can say something about the fourth world war what is that the fourth world war will be fought with stones and sticks that means with the third world war the devastation will be complete complete destruction of whole of humanity of the whole world and the whole world will have to start from stones and sticks this is what he said so this is the scenario where we are in need of world peace globalization we are talking about globalization globalization has already come at least on economic front communication technology has undergone tremendous transformation and the world has been united as never before it's a global village as they say but where is the global peace global peace cannot come till there is a global civilization this is what swami vivekan pointed out that unless until there is harmony between various faiths unless until there is the destruction of the conflicts between various religions there will be lot of blood shed which has been occurring and which will occur so in order to have world peace we must have first of all for a global peace we must have global civilizations <clears throat> and for which what is required is interfaith harmony this is what was pointed out by swami vivekanand on his, during his historic speech on the in the world's parliament of religions in chicago on 11th september 1893 where he said in the last portion of his speech that <clears throat> sectarianism the god tree and his horrible descendant fanaticism have long possessed this beautiful earth they have drenched it often and often with human blood destroyed civilizations destroyed nations and sent whole nations to despair had it not been for these horrible demons our human society would have been far more advanced than it is now But the time is come, and I fervently hope that the bell that toll this morning in the honor of this convention may be the death knell of all fanaticism, of all persecution, whether with the sword or whether with the pen, and of all uncharitable feelings between persons wending their way to the same goal. This is what he expressed. This is what he hoped. But even today, what do we find? Lot of struggle going on. Lot of strife going on. Like lot of quarrels going on in the name of religion still there is fanaticism still there is dogmatism still there is sectarianism 
we have not been able to say goodbye to fanaticism as Swami Vivekananda wanted. With the result, after 108 years, there was another 9-11. Swami Vivekananda gave his speech on 9-11 when he warned about the sectarianism, sectarianism and bigotry and fundamentalism and fanaticism. We did not listen to his message. There was another 9-11. As on today also, this fanaticism is going on all over the world. Still, there is bloodshed going on all over the world. There's a beautiful book by Samuel P. Huntington. The name of the book is The Class of Civilizations and Remaking of a World Order, where he says that most of the wars that were caused for the last 50 years were not the wars between two countries. Basically, they were wars between faiths, between religions, between civilizations. And so he says, it is not a clash of countries, it is a clash of civilizations. And unless until we are able to have, avoid this clash of civilizations, and that will be avoided only if there is interfaith harmony. And that is why interfaith harmony becomes of supreme importance. But now the million dollar question is how to have interfaith harmony. There are various methods. Uh, one method proposed by them, what, what we can call, is a blacksmith method. You might have heard that story in the childhood. There was a blacksmith and he had a son who had very little brain. And the blacksmith told his son, you see, when I am doing my work, if, the, if a fly comes, Please remove these flies, otherwise it will interfere in my work. I want to concentrate on my work. So the son said, don't worry, father. I will see that no fly comes to you. As then the father started working and the iron was hot and he was trying to put the hammer. At that time, the son saw a fly sitting on the head of the father. He just took a hammer and gave a blow. The fly died and father also died. <laughs> this, is all called, this is called blacksmith method. This is what we are proposing. Many youngsters, they say, you know, why remove religion from the society? All these quarrels between religions, because of the religions only, these quarrels are happening. So remove religion from the society. Let there be no religion. But is it a solution? Swami Vivekananda says, if you remove religion from the human society, what you would be left with only a few brutes and not, not human beings. A human being without religion is a brute. It is religion which will make a human being more and more kind, more and more compassionate, and more and more understanding others' feelings. This all can come, these feelings can come if one practices spirituality, one practices religion, whatever religion it may be. So that is not the solution. Killing, removing the religion is like killing the mosquito and killing the father also, killing the man also. That is not the solution. UNESCO preamble says, since wars begin in the minds of the people, it is in the minds of the people that the peace measures must be constructed. Since wars begin in the minds of the people, it is in the minds of the people that peace measures must be constructed. So first is that our mind should have peace of mind. Then only we can have world peace. This is the most important thing. And there's a beautiful statement by Dr. Josiah Oldfield when he said in the Second World War during a treaty, he says beautifully, <clears throat> since more wars are caused by bad-tempered people trying to seek peace measures rather than by the bad, good-tempered people trying to seek war measures. More wars are caused by bad-tempered people 
trying to discuss peace measures than by the good tempered people trying to discuss war measures. So, even if they discuss peace measures, but if they are bad tempered, if there is no peace in the mind, there cannot be any peace in the outside world. And how did peace will come when one follows spirituality, when one follows religion? So that is why blacksmith method will not work. Second, what we can call is pro-Christus method. It is about a Greek story. There was pro-Christus, a Greek god, who used to stay top on the top of the mountain. And he had a peculiar bed. And he thought his bed was the best bed. And his bed was suitable for all human beings. And his bed was a peculiar one and uniform bed for uniform for all. So it was uniform, it was suitable for all the people. So whenever some people will go by the mountain, he will call them, invite them as their guest, and they will make them sit, make them sleep on the same cot. Now, if the man, if the height, if the length of the cot is uniform, that is standard, he thought that is the best bed, best cot, and the uniform cot suitable for all. So what he would do, he will stretch the legs of the guest and make it suitable to the cot. And if the legs are long, he will just cut the leg. But he thought, my cot is the best cot, my cot is the most suitable cot, and for everybody in the world. This is what happens. Many religions, they say, there will be world peace only when there is one religion. Uniform. All are having same dress. All are having the same religion. No problem. Here they are all agreeing. Yes, world peace will come only when there will be one religion. When all the religious will be will be sent away, will be destroyed, only one religion will remain, and that then only we can have world peace. But that will be my religion. <laughs> Difference is there, and every religion, every religious follower says, my religion is the best religion, suitable for all. All other religions should be destroyed. This is another method, pro Christus method. This is not going to work because every other religion feels, every religion feels, my religion is the best. My religion is the only religion that is good for the humankind, for the mankind. Let all the other religions be destroyed. And that is why so much of quarrel is going on in the name of religion. So that is not going to solve a problem. Whether it is exclusiveness or inclusiveness. Either way, this pro method is not going to work. Another method is the method of interfaith harmony. What in the modern, modern terminology is pluralism. Now many people are, have started advocating pluralism because after all we have to have one stand whereby we are able to accommodate various faiths because it is taking a very long time to destroy all the faiths except one. So make another experiment. Okay, you follow your own faith. For you, this is your best. But let others follow their own faith. Let us coexist together. Let us accept others' religion. So that is what Swami Vivekan said. We do not believe only in toleration. We accept all religions as equally true. This has to be accepted by all religions. Then only there will be peace of mind. There will be world peace. How? Yes, your religion is best for you. Your dress is best for you. Your food is best for you. But let other person, if he feels, if he wants some other food, let him have his own food. Let him have his own dress. Let him have his own religion. Let there be freedom. And let us all coexist together. Let us respect others. You follow your own religion. You need not follow others' religion. But at the same time, respect other religions. That is called the harmony of religions, pluralism. And that was advocated by Sri Ramakrishna. And he advocated 
thought is a theoretical concept. Swami Vivekananda says his life itself was a parliament religion. Why? Because Sri Ramakrishna practiced various religions by turn. He practiced. First, he had the vision of Mother Kali. He practiced the path of devotion. Then he had the vision of Rama, Krishna, Radha, Sita, Hanuman, so many things. And various ways of various part, very in various, according to various sects, according to various ways of Hinduism, he practiced various paths and came to the conclusion that ultimately leads to one. Then he practiced Tantra Sadhana under Bhairavi Brahmani. Then he practiced Vedanta and made Totapuri his guru. And after reaching the ultimate reality, according to Vedanta, he remained in Samadhi for a long time. It did not stop there. In 1966, he practiced Islam. He used to uh, follow the instructions of a Sufi teacher uh, who was a Sufi. And then he used to go, he used to, used to uh, do namaz for five times a day as is done by the Muslims. So he practiced all the paths according to Islam. Then he ultimately, he had the vision of the absolute. The same vision that he had after following various other paths. Then 1974, he practiced Christianity. Somebody was reading out Bible to him. Then he had the vision of Christ. In the temple of Dakshineshwar under Panchvati, he saw a tall, handsome man coming from the other side to him, to his side. And gradually he came, embraced him and entered into him. And somebody, some, and he word from, he heard the words from inside. Here is Christ who sacrificed his whole life for the sake of humanity. So he practiced various faiths by turn and ultimately he reached a stage of the absolute. Ultimately he reached only one stage where he found infinite bliss. So he came to the conclusion, Joto Moth, Toto Path. As many faiths, so many paths. The paths may be different. There are so many paths, ultimately leading to one reality. And that reality may be called by different names. It may be different names. But reality is one. It is absolute reality. Names may be different and the paths may be different. And Sri Ramakrishna used to give a beautiful example that there is a pond of water. From one side, Hindu is going and say, no, I have brought Jal. Another side, a Muslim goes and says, no, 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 I have brought Pani. Third side, a Christian goes, no, 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 I have brought water. Fourth side, another person goes, he says, no, 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 I have brought aqua. Why are you fighting? It is the only one thing, whether you call Pani, you call Jal, you can call water, you can call aqua. If you ask the scientists, they will say it is H2O. Name, you may give anything. Ultimately, it is H2O. Names may be different. Reality is one. So that is what Sri Ramakrishna told. He declared as many faiths, so many paths, not based on any theory, based on his own experience. Now this is the blessing for the humanity, that based on his experience, he sort of validated the statement of the Vedas, where it was told, Ekam Sat Vipra Bahuda Vadanti. The truth is one, sages call it by different names. That was in our own times, verified and practically demonstrated by Sri Ramakrishna in his life. And that is why Swami Vivekanand broadcasted this message of Sri Ramakrishna, of harmony of religions. And he said in the world pile of religions that we do not only tolerate, but we accept all religions equally true. Why? Because he had seen in the life of Sri Ramakrishna, how followers of various faiths used to come to him and get his get guidance from him, and how Sri Ramakrishna would go into ecstasy while following various paths 
of various faiths of various religions and that is why he came to the he had first had experience that yes a person who has experienced this in his own laboratory of his practical life he has demonstrated that all faiths lead to the same goal this is what he announced what he proclaimed in the world's parliament religions so ultimately the crux of the whole thing is unless until we say goodbye to fundamentalism the interfaith harmony cannot come and fundamentalism can go only if we go more give more importance to the fundamentals of each religion you see rituals may be different external forms may be different but we go to the core of each and every faith it is the same qualities of love compassion service to humanity these are the virtues that have been praised in various faiths in various religions so if you go to the fundamentals then only fundamentalism will go fundamentalism will go so this is what we try to say in our interfaith conferences interfaith conferences and interfaith conferences this message of shri ram krishna has got the potentiality to usher in a new civilizations where it will be we will be saying goodbye to all sorts of fanaticism where we will be giving respect to all other religions while practicing our own religion and then only world peace will come in ram krishna mission we try to practice this harmony of religions how first of all we do not have any differentiation persons from different caste different religions different countries they become monks we have monks who are from who were earlier life they were buddhist or they were christian or they were following islam and of various faiths they have joined as monks from different countries different caste we all live together pray together in ramkrishna mission more than 1500 monks 265 branch centers 65 abroad and 200 in india and in almost all the branch centers we observe the birthdays of great prophets of various religions buddhism sikhism jainism christianity in our bangladesh centers we have celebrations connected with islam so we do not discriminate while service to humanity in our hospitals you will find whether it is hospital whether it is any other service activity whether it is disaster relief we do not discriminate according to religion faith or caste creed no in respect to caste creed color religion nationality we provide our services in ram krishna mission so we are trying to practice it not only that swami vivekan when he started ram krishna mission in the constitution itself he wrote in the memorandum in the constitution he wrote that anybody who wants to become a member of ramkrishna even if a lay member will have to give a declaration that he will respect all religions so this is a great thing in 1897 he started ramkrishna mission at that time he was such a visionary that he could foresee that a global civilization will have to emerge and for which this respect towards other religions is a must for the followers of ram krishna mission now if these other organizations so when we organize interfaith conferences interfaith conferences we request all the other faiths that you also try to be little more democratic in nature and many are coming also i can share one experience that recently i had been to america united states of america and then on 15th of uh, october i was there from 5th to 30th october so on 15th of october i was in chicago and in chicago swami vivekananda delivered his speech in a church unitarian church in chicago 
after the world's parliamentary elections world's parliamentary elections ended in on 27 september and on 15th october he delivered his speech in this unitarian church and exactly after 130 years the authorities of the church wanted that the monks of ramkesh mission should come and they talk about swami vivekan they talk about interfaith harmony so that is why we monks of ramkesh mission had gone there on 15th of uh, october there was a very nice celebration and they were very open minded so gradually the spirit of interfaith harmony is percolating down to the other faiths also a time will come when all the faiths will accept this concept of harmony of religions this concept of pluralism whereby we become not only tolerant but we accept other religions as equally true and we respect them at the same time we follow our own religions according to our faith according to our method no doubt no problem about it so this is the need of the hour if we can follow this interfaith harmony both at the individual level and at the community level then gradually this and and, and we try to follow the fundamentals of our own faiths we try to realize the truth which is there in our own faith then if we are sincere in our own faith gradually you'll find that the people of other faiths are also trying to follow the same inherent values fundamental values and then this strife will go then this hatred for other faiths will go then this fundamentalism will go and this bigotry will go so we have to gradually practice this interfaith harmony both at individual level and at the community level there is another method which swami vivekan had proposed wonderful he dreamt of a universal religion when it will come we do not know but that was believe a wonderful thing for the whole of humanity so swami vivekan while uh, speaking on hinduism on 15th of september 1893 in the words by the religions he said if there is ever to be a universal religion it must be one which will have no location in place or time which will be infinite like the god it will preach and whose sun will shine upon the followers of krishna and of christ on saints and sinners alike which will not be brahmanistic or buddhistic christian or mohammedan but the sum total of all these and still have infinite space for development which in its catholicity will embrace in its infinite arms and find a place for every human being from the lowest groveling savage not far removed from the brute to the highest man towering by the virtues of his head and heart almost above humanity making society stand in awe of him and doubt his human nature it will be a religion which will have no place for persecution or intolerance in its polity which will recognize divinity in every man and woman and whose whole scope whose whole force will be centered in aiding humanity to realize its own true divine nature what a wonderful thing wonderful thing swami vivekan dreamt of this universal religion till i would like to conclude by reciting a song this song was the favorite song of both shri ram krishna and swami vivekananda whenever swami vivekan would come shri ram krishna would tell him to sing naren please sing and when naren say now i am going no before you go you please sing this song what is that song which was the favorite song of shri ram krishna and swami vivekanand that is the song that was composed by last mughal emperor bahadur shah zafar this gives the message not only of vedanta he was a sufi he was a sufi sufi uh, follower bahadur shah zafar but this song gives the message of vedanta and also the message of harmony of religions the song 
that was sung by Swami Vivekananda is that tujse humne dil ko lagaya jo kuch hai so tu hi hai ek tujko apna paya jo kuch hai so tu hi hai oh lord everywhere you are present tujse humne dil ko lagaya we have given our heart to you tujse humne dil ko lagaya jo kuch hai so tu hi hai oh lord you are present everywhere this is the message of vedanta isha vasya midam sarvam yatkinch jagatyam jagat तेन तक्तेन भुंजिता मा गृद कस सिद्धनम से ईशा वाश्य उपनिषद द लॉर्ड इज परमिटिंग द होल वर्ल्ड दिस इज वॉट दिस सॉन्ग से तुझसे हमने दिल को लगाया जो कुछ है सो तू ही है एक तुझको अपना पाया जो कुछ है सो तू ही है आई फाउंड यू आर द ओनली वन डियरेस्ट टू मी सबके मकान दिल का मकीन तू कौन सा दिल है जिसमें नहीं तू हर एक दिल में तू ही समाया जो कुछ है सो तू ही है कठोपनिषद से एश सर्वेश भूतेशु गुणो आत्मा न प्रकाशते दृश्यते त्वग्रया बुद्धिया सूक्ष्मया सूक्ष्म दर्श भी इन साइड एवरी ह्यूमन बीइंग देर इज अ सेंटर ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस कॉल्ड द आत्मन व्हिच इज नॉट विजिबल टू द ऑर्डिनरी पीपल बट इट इज विजिबल what is the document evidence evidence is that some people have seen it some people have experienced this atman who have experienced those who have got very subtle intellect they have experienced it sarveshu bhuteshu esha sarveshu bhuteshu gulo atma na prakashate drishyate tvagraya buddhya sukshmaya sukshma darshi bhi those who got that subtle intellect they have experienced this atman that is the proof of it so same thing is told here sabke makan dil ka makin tu kaun sa dil hai jisme nahi tu har ek dil mein tu hi samaya jo kuch hai tu hi oh lord you are present in everybody's heart in everybody every human being that is what the message says that is what the song says kya malayak kya insaan kya hindu kya musliman जैसा चाहा तूने बनाया जो कुछ है से तू ही इन एवरी ह्यूमन बीइंग ओ लॉर्ड यू आर प्रेजेंट वेदर बिलोंगिंग टू एनी फेथ लॉर्ड इट इज यू यू आर प्रेजेंट इन एवरी ह्यूमन बीइंग इन रेस्पेक्टिव ऑफ रिलीजन दिस इज व्हाट द सॉन्ग सेज एंड व्हाट द उपनिषद से श्वेता श्वेत उपनिषद सेज तम स्त्री तम पुमानसी तम कुमार उत्वा कुमारी तम जीर्णो दंडे न वंशसी तम जातो भवसी विश्व तो मुख ओ लॉर्ड यू आर द मैन यू आर द वुमन यू आर द ओल्ड मैन टॉटरिंग विद स्टिक ओ लॉर्ड यू आर प्रेजेंट एवरीवेयर इन साइड एवरी ह्यूमन बीइंग इट इज द सेम लॉर्ड दैट इज व्हाट दिस सॉन्ग सेज काबा में क्या देवल में क्या तेरी परवरिश होगी सब जा सभी ने तुझको सिर है झुकाया जो कुछ है सो तू ही है व्हाट अ ब्यूटीफुल सेंटिमेंट wherever oh lord you are being worshiped everywhere whether in kaaba whether in temple whether in in a gurudwara everywhere in every place lord you are being worshiped lord is the same that is the idea given in this song the idea of harmony of religions oh lord you are present everywhere kaaba mein kya deval mein kya teri parvarish hogi sab ja सभी ने तुझको सिर है झुकाया जो कुछ है तू ही है अर्श से लेकर फर्श जमी तक और जमी से अर्श बरी तक जामा है जहां में देखा तू ही नजर आया जो कुछ है तू ही है वॉट ए वंडरफुल थिंग वो लॉर्ड यू आर प्रेजेंट एवरीवेयर फ्रॉम अर्थ टू द स्काई फ्रॉम स्काई टू द अर्थ एवरीवेयर यू आर प्रेजेंट दैट इज वॉट उपनिषद से सर्वम खलुदम ब्रह्म सर्वम खलुदम ब्रह्म ब्रह्म इज प्रेजेंट that lord is present everywhere same thing is being told here arsh se lekar farsh zameen tak aur zameen se arsh bari tak jahan main dekha tu hi nazar aaya jo kuch hai to hi hai even the modern quantum mechanics has proved it that is the holistic universe all the particles of the whole universe are interconnected at deeper level that is what the modern science says and that has been proved by david bohm a nobel prize physicist 
and that is why another Nobel Prize physicist Schrodinger says consciousness is a singular of which the plural is unknown. Consciousness is a singular of which the plural is unknown. So it is one universal consciousness present everywhere. Why should you love each other? Why should there be why should there be universal brotherhood? Why should you not have other followers of other religions? Because you and I are not separate. It is the same divinity present in every human being. Every human being is same divinity. What a wonderful concept. And ultimately, lastly, socha, samja, dekha, bhala, tujjaisa na koi dhund nikala, ab ye samaj mein zafar ki aya, jo kuch is at hai. Ultimately, after long struggle, I have found, oh Lord, you are present everywhere. Whom to hate? With whom to fight? Everywhere, Lord, you are present. Every human being, irrespective of caste, creed, color, religion, nationality, is nothing but is nothing but the same Lord. Same Lord is permeating the whole world. The same Lord is present in every human being. So let us not hate each other. Let us not fight with each other. And let us all respect followers of other religions. That is the message of harmony of religious given by this favorite song of Swami Vivekananda Sri Ramakrishna. So at the end, I will pray to the Lord to grant strength so that we are able to follow our own faith in our own manner. At the same time, respecting other faiths, we are able to practice this interfaith harmony at individual level and community level, thus resulting in world peace. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tassat Sri Ram Krishna Arpanamastra